Hello, today we're going to take a look at capturing terrain mesh out of the ArcGIS SDK for Unity. I'm going to be using a tool called FBX Exporter. This FBX will be just like any other mesh. You can retexture it, you can export to Blender, change the quality, change the size, and then of course you can add interactivity to your terrain. Alright, so I'm going to create a new Unity project using URP, their Universal Render Pipeline. So that the project name, the location, and the editor version. You can also create the project in HDRP, but not the default render pipeline. I'm going to head over to Google and type in ArcGIS Maps SDK for Unity. Click on the website. You can create a free developer account and download the SDK for free. So we end up with this Unity package file. I'm just going to drag this into the project and accept all of the imports. I'm going to open up the prefab scene New York, and this is what we end up with. I'm going to pull up Google Earth, go to Mount Etna in Italy, right click, select the coordinates, and copy and paste them into Notepad. So I'm just going to paste the latitude and longitude into the camera location of the prefab, hit play, and you can see that we are now moving around Mount Etna. Now I'm going to import the FBX exporter. I'm going to go to the package manager. I'm going to select packages in the Unity registry and look for the FBX exporter and import that. All right, now in order to capture this data, some of it's going to be done in play mode because the terrain isn't generated unless you hit play. So I have my game view on the right, the scene view on the left. I am navigating the camera in the game view, which moves both of them. I'm just going to use the mouse to select the whole terrain inside of the scene view. You'll see in the hierarchy that it's selecting the live tiles. Just scroll up and make sure that it's not selecting anything else like the camera. With the tiles you want selected, go over to Game Object and Export FBX. This option showed up because you installed the FBX exporter. Type in a name and hit export. Alright, so that's it. You now have a mesh generated from whatever you selected. However, sometimes when generating this, if you open up the file or take a look at it on the bottom right here, if you see that it did not generate properly, just delete the file and do it again. Sometimes you do get this. If it works properly, you open it up and you should see the shape of a terrain. Alright, so we have our mesh. Now nothing is on the hierarchy yet. We're going to build this prefab in play mode. So we'll hit play. Inside of the prefab New York, it does have to be in there, we're going to create an empty game object. I'm going to rename this parent. And then I'm going to add a location component to that. Then I'm going to drag our new mesh inside of that object. So I'm going to reposition this terrain approximately where I need it to go and I am only repositioning with the parent object. As you can see, the location component is moving around with it. Now what I'm going to do is to open up the mesh object. I'm going to select all of the items inside. I'm going to add a mesh collider to them all and undo the mesh renderer. From here, we can begin repositioning the parent again. Make sure not to reposition the tiles, but you're going to be repositioning the parent and you're going to want to get the mesh lined up with the ArcGIS tiles underneath. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. So we are in play mode. We have the parent with the location component on it. Inside of that, we have a game object. And inside of that game object is all of the separate meshes. None of the positions have moved inside of the parent game object. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to grab this parent object, drag it down into the assets to turn it into a prefab. Now we can exit play mode and drag it back into the hierarchy into our normal project. When you hit play again, everything should be put back into its proper location. And again, remember we are putting this inside of the prefab New York game object that came with the demo. It has the map controller script on it already. So now we have a mesh collider locked on location over the map with the location component. Now we can start adding interactivity. I'm going to go over to the asset store and grab these free rocks. You will need to update the shaders to work with URP, which is fairly easy. You can do that with this chart here. And you also have to add a mesh collider with these rocks. Just set it to convex. There is an automatic option for updating the shaders to work with URP, but sometimes it doesn't always work, so I keep that chart handy. So I'm going to create a bunch of rocks here. The parent is always going to have to have the location component on it. Now, I think really the best way to do this is probably just to have one location component um, that all of your stuff goes into. So we had that one already for the mesh. Really, we should be adding it to that. For the sake of the demo, I'm going to create a separate parent for these rocks just to show you a few things. So I have an empty game object holding the rigid bodies. And as you can see, as we move around here, it's going to go with the camera. Now, it still interacts, but it's going to move along with the camera, and we want to lock it in place. So what I'm going to do is just to add a location component to the parent. That's going to lock it in place. And then what I'm going to do is right-click and copy the component. When we exit play mode, we can now add the location component 
and right click and paste the component values to lock it in place. So this is to show you how to grab some of that data. Really we could also just nest everything inside of the parent mesh object that already has the one location component on it. You can just think of it like an anchor. All right, so here we are. We have a mesh over the entire mountain contour. We have rigid bodies interacting with it. You can, of course, add people, cars, anything that you would normally do with any kind of a terrain. You can retexture this using different shaders for mobile or whatever else you want to do, or you can export it. Now, you may notice that some of the physics look a little slow. That's because the mountain size is so massive that what you're really looking at is things falling from a large distance. Mount Etna being a real volcano, if you were to watch videos of this, the physics size and speed starts to make sense. Because we're working with such a massive scale, by default you're not going to see the shadow distance showing up properly. I'm just going to adjust that by going to Assets, look for URP, the High Fidelity Render Pipeline Asset is what I'm using, and you can see the shadow distance, the maximum distance is set over here. Alright, so now we can play around with this a little bit, add some objects, change the skybox and the lighting, change the angles of the lighting, add some fog. So in this video what we're really doing is we're overlaying the mesh over the live tiles. If this were to be used in a game or another application where you don't need all the external live mapping, I would probably take this mesh and retexture it using something with more detail up close. One last tip, in the last video I made somebody had asked how I got the live ocean. All this is is a flat plane object with a water shader and water script added to it. You can get these from the asset store or even in the Unity free standard assets. I take that plane and I just place it one unit above the ocean. Thanks for watching.